Well, the countdown is on to the total eclipse, and there's no one more excited than this woman right here. Nope. <laughs> uh, Rebecca has been studying this for you. You saw it one day, and it changed your life. Yeah, really. I got to field anchor from the Path of Totality for the last one four years ago, and I became hooked. I've been excited about this day ever since then, okay. and so that's why I'm trying to get you guys excited. So today we're going to get really nerdy and talk about some of the phenomenon that happens during this process. Yes. Uh, and you have three things you want to talk about. Let's start with the shadow... Sh shadow bands. Shadow bands. Yeah, and we don't have a good picture of this because it's really difficult to capture. So shadow bands happen right if you're in the Path of Totality, right before you achieve totality. If you were to look at buildings or mountains by you, you might see black... Like, dark stripes kind of racing across the the landscape wow. there and they call those shadow bands they move very fast and they're pretty faint so there's not any real good imagery I could show you of that okay but I've got great imagery for everything else and okay. this is my absolute favorite thing about an eclipse right as you approach totality it's called Bailey's beads see the surface of the moon is not completely smooth there are craters there are mountains and so more light peaks out between the mountains or in those craters and it creates that little bead there and sometimes they're all in a row in some eclipses so it almost looks like a string of pearls so when you see this phenomena you're about to enter totality so this is one of the really cool aspects do of people it. scream out bailey's beads when that happens i did <laughs> Please get that on tape. I want, I want to see video of that. Yeah. All right, there's a third one, too. Now, these are the diamond ring effect. Is yes, that so the is? diamond ring effect happens right before and right after you go out of totality, and it's that last bright aspect oh, of cool. the sun peeking out from behind the moon or peeking out in front of the moon if it is going out of totality. And so you can see how you've got the band that looks like the diamond ring, and then the actual diamond ring would be the light itself. So that's a really fun phenomena, and that one's a little easier to capture on camera, so the photographers are out there mm -hmm. usually nail this shot. Bailey's beads is harder. And, and you've talked about about uh, where you can go to travel to find the best uh, view of this. How long does this actually happen? What's the And so the if you're in the center thing? of the path of totality, you're going to get totality, which we have one image of right here, for about four minutes, okay, wow. which is double what we saw last time. So okay. when you enter totality, this is what you're here for. This is what's amazing. You're looking at the corona of the sun, the fiery tongues of light peeking out from around the moon, and you'll get about four and a half minutes of it from the center of the path of totality. The further you get away from that center of the path of totality, the shorter amount of time is. And once you get out of the path of totality, you're not going to see this at all and you've got to keep your glasses on the entire time the fiery tongues of light <laughs> yes i like that now i have one more really okay. nerdy aspect Let's okay a scientist that i was communicating with has suggested that if you wear red or green it would enhance your viewing experience from the path of totality and here's the science behind it there are two types of cells in your eyes rods and cones when you're in bright light conditions like we are right now where you're using your cones but when you go into lower light conditions you're using the rod cells and those don't pick up on neutrals as well those don't pick up on colors of blue as well but they pick up on reds and they really pick up on greens very well so if you're surrounded by people wearing reds and greens when you started to get closer to that time of totality and the light started to get dim instead of you sensing less and less vibrant see in colors either the rods would be picking up on the reds and greens all around you so it might enhance your experience if you could convince you and all your friends so who are red and green christmas party oh yeah on the total eclipse oh we're doing it yeah we're doing it have you decided where you're going yet <laughs> yeah we're going to dallas but based on the lack of cloud cover the ability of flights to get in and out and also the the robust interstate system if it is cloudy there we can hop on you know we're bringing our passports we can have hop on down to mexico or hop on up the interstate to where we get find some sunshine okay so for people who are really getting into this any other tips that you can recommend for uh, yes. learning more about it and so if you enjoyed this at all you might enjoy a little bit more recommended reading and so I'm going to point out my two favorite books about this one is observe eclipses by Michael Reynolds he was a professor I knew in northeastern Florida Another really comprehensive guide is Guide to Eclipses, Transits, and Occultations by Dave Levy. And then if you've got kids, The Complete Guide to Great, um, the Ameri Great American Solar Eclipse by K.J. Honda does a really good job. There's actually books about this. There's so many books about this. Unbelievable. Look at how much we're learning. I love it. Thanks it's so, so much. Exciting. The nerdy tips were great. All right, much more to come after the break. Stay with us.